families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, and welcome to this week's Families Divided program. All of us love to see our children and grandchildren draw pictures. Many of them make us smile. But as Dr. William Burnett tells us, often those drawings reveal a lot about what children that are victims of alienation are feeling. Dr. Burnett shares what those drawings can tell us right after these messages. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Parental alienation is sad. When parents can't arrive at a solution amicably, it may be time to seek legal help for the sake of the children involved. In Florida, that's when you should contact Sparkman Law, specializing in litigating and defending complex and severe cases of parental alienation. Contact Shazia Sparkman, founder and managing attorney of Sparkman Law. Learn more at sparkmanlawfirm.com. Nice to be here today on our program for Families Divided. And um, I'm Bill Burnett, as Elaine said, and I'm going to be talking today about how children express their feelings in their artwork. And in particular, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, children whose parents are separated or divorced, and in, in some cases, children whose parents are uh, where the children are alienated from one of the parents. So um, I hope to show some pictures. And in fact, if, if you all have pictures, I'm, I'm gonna tell you at the end how you can send them to me if you wanna be included in some future presentation. So that would be great if you can do that. Well, first of all, let me give you the definition of parental alienation, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So in this, in this particular thing, this is the only thing I, this is something I think I need to read so that we're all here together. Parental alienation refers to a situation where a child, usually one whose parents are engaged in a high conflict separation or divorce, allies strongly with one parent, whom we call the favored parent, and rejects a relationship with the other parent, the alienated parent, without a good reason. So we can make a little family diagram, and in the family diagram, uh, the two parents are in conflict with each other. And then in the next picture, this little yellow squiggle down at the bottom shows what we refer to as parental alienation. In other words, it's a, it's a condition, it's a mental condition in the child in which the child is rejecting a relationship with the alienated parent. And in the next picture is a big red arrow. And the big arrow, red arrow is what we call alienating behaviors. In other words, the alienating parent engages in these alienating behaviors that causes a child to become alienated from the other parent. So let's talk about some pictures. Um, so first of all, 
children at times have reasons to become estranged from both of their parents. And what I mean by that is that maybe both parents have done things with the child that are inappropriate or even abusive, and the child resents it, and the child has bad feelings about the parents. So just to be clear, we're not talking here about alienation. We're talking about here is a child who is justified in feeling resentment at the parents. So the, we have a picture here by an eight-year-old boy. And in this picture, he is dramatically demonstrating his dislike for his mom. Now, if, if you see in this picture, there's a little stick figure which represents the mother. And so what the, what the therapist did, or what I did in this case, I said, you know, this little figure here is your mother, and now put yourself in this picture. And the boy drew this pretty gruesome picture, which he described as a skeleton. You can see it has a skeleton head, and it has a werewolf body. And so he's trying to convey here that he has really bad feelings about his mother. And sadly, in the next picture, we have the same boy who also has very unhappy feelings about his dad. In this case, what I said, the, I said the little stick figure, I said, here's your dad, add yourself, put yourself in this picture. And he drew this picture of a devil. So this is, this is obviously, this is a pretty sad situation. And, you know, I, I, I can't really go into the details here, but this little boy had reason to be uh, resentful of or upset or to really have a, a dislike for both his mom and his dad. But it's a, pr a pretty vivid way for the child to express those feelings. Incidentally, I'm not trying to suggest here that these drawings can be used to diagnose the child. In other words, the, these drawings are done as part of a psychiatric evaluation, but the, the drawings don't make the diagnosis. But the drawings do help us understand what's going on in the child's mind, you know, because this is the way the child expresses himself rather than just in conversation. The child might express himself through drawings like this. So let me move on to a different angle here, which has to do with loyalty conflicts. So when a child has a loyalty conflict, there's a, there's a conflict going on between the parents and the child is trying to have a good relationship with both of them. So in this particular case, I, I mean, I knew the history of the child and I knew that the parents had engaged in a, in a serious dispute over years and the child is caught in the middle. So the child drew this picture it, it, it's a somewhat elaborate picture of a battle going on. You can see a tank and airplanes and a helicopter and so on. And incidentally, the, you can sort of see the other side of the paper. This, this was actually drawn on the, the back side of a restaurant placemat. In other words, the child was coming to my appointment and the, uh, the person who was bringing him, they, they stopped at a restaurant and had breakfast and the child spontaneously drew this really elaborate picture of a battle. What, I mean, he's, he's referring to the battle between his parents. That's what he's talking about here. And when he, he later uh, described this to me, he inserted himself into the battle to be on, on one side of this particular battle. Well, this was before he ever came, even came to my office, but when he came to my office, he said, can he draw a picture? But sort of at the end of the appointment time, he asked me if he could draw a picture, and I said, sure. And then he drew this next picture, which simply has a, a, a ship, I guess it's a little battleship, um, and an airplane. And, and he pointed out that he was in the airplane as part of this battle. But the, the interesting comment that he made, he said he was going to draw a picture, and he said, I'll draw my favorite thing. It's a war. So this is a pretty graphic illustration of how these children feel caught in the, in the battlefield between their mom and their dad. And of course, it's painful to be there and it's very sad. Well, it's so painful that the child doesn't wanna be caught in the middle of the battlefield. And so what some children do is they get out of the middle by gravitating to one side and refusing to see the other parent. And that's what happens in parental alienation that there's a shift between what we would call a loyalty conflict, where the child is trying to have a relationship with both parents, 
and the child shifts to having a relationship with only one parent and rejecting the second parent. So that's a mechanism the child uses to get out of the middle of the battle. And it it's, uh, leads to parental alienation. So uh, parental alienation comes in stages. We, we have definitions for mild, moderate, and severe levels. And sometimes we can see what happens in a transition from being sort of an everyday child to having a mild level of alienation. And usually the, the, that this is manifested by some level of distress, of depression or anxiety or, or uh, headaches or stomach aches or some level of, of, of distress. So let me give you an example here of a girl who uh, became mildly alienated. So this first picture by a 13 year old girl is before she became alienated. In other words, here she draws this wonderful little picture of, her, of a baby, of, of a child and a dad. And she says on it to dad love. So obviously in this, you know, at this point she's having a wonderful, a good healthy relationship with both her mom and her dad. And it's illustrated in this picture. Well, in the next picture, it's the same girl a couple of years later. And at this point, she's starting to become alienated from her father. And that's not manifested directly in the picture, but it's a very unhappy picture and that she herself called this picture, it's a self portrait of a girl. And she said, I'm ugly. In other words, as, as children become alienated, it's not a happy situation. It's a, it's a depressing situation, even though the child is now out of the battle, it's still a depressing situation because the child is in the, in the position of rejecting one of the parents. And this is a good example where uh, as time had progressed, she's having very, very bad feelings about herself. She says, I'm ugly. Well, this idea that children have bad feelings about themselves gets even worse uh, as the alienation progresses. So let me move to, to a severe level of parental alienation. So I already said that we have mild, moderate, and severe. I'll tell you real quick how to, how to make those differences. In mild alienation, the child says, I don't wanna go see the other parent. I don't wanna go see daddy, for instance. But the child goes and is fine. The child has a good time with daddy and everybody has a good relationship at that point, even though the child said, I don't want to go see daddy. In moderate, the child says, I don't want to go see daddy. And the child goes, but is difficult. In other words, the child is oppositional, is negative, stays in her room, uh, won't interact, won't have a meal, won't have dinner with, with that parent. And so even though she's physically present, she doesn't interact. Severe means the child says, I don't want to go see daddy, and the child doesn't go. In other words, there's a flat refusal to go see the other parent. Or if she does go, she's oppositional. She's severely oppositional during the entire time of the parenting time with that parent. So those are very rough, you know, those are fairly simple distinctions between mild, moderate, and severe alienation. So I want to move here to several examples of what happens in severe parental alienation. And I told you, first of all, that these children have really, it's very unhappy, and they have very bad opinions of themselves. And so you can see this picture by a nine-year-old girl, which is really, uh, it says at the top, it says, I hate myself. Or no, she says, I hate my life. And then she draws a picture and she says, that's me. And, and this is obviously a, a really disturbing, uh, unhappy sort of, I guess you could even say ugly picture. And it's very sad that a child is, is drawing a picture like that um, of herself. So we can see progression in these cases from prior to alienation to, to more, uh, to the onset of the alienation and even more severe. So here's, a, here's an example where we can see that progression. So this is a note that the child addressed to her dad. Uh, this is a little girl, a nine-year-old girl. And at this point, she and her dad are getting along and she's not alienated. But in this little note, she says, dear dad, 
there is only one person in the world to be my daddy, and that is you. And then there's this little dotted line where she says, drum roll, please. In other words, the idea is that you, you read it and you hear da 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 the drum roll as part of her note, which is kind of a sweet touch. And then she says, love you, loads, loads, and so on. Uh, incidentally, these pictures are all uh, anonymous in the sense that we removed, you know, we, we removed any identifying information from these pictures and these, these notes. But this was that girl prior to being coming alienated from her father. And the next picture, I have to warn you, is, is pretty unpleasant. It, it's in fact, it's shocking. But it's the same girl a few months later when she has become alienated from her dad. And take a look at this, which has this picture of this little girl who is holding a sword. And she's saying, me. And she's saying, unsincerely. In other words, it's like a note, you know, instead of sincerely, me, it's unsincerely. And she's cutting off the head of her dad. And she says, you head uh, unattached, I guess is what she says here. And I mean, that, that's a very dramatic, and I guess you could say poignant illustration of this little girl's strong, strong feelings about her dad. And what's sad is that this is not justified. In other words, in parental alienation, the dad has not done anything to justify having his head cut off by his daughter. That's, that's, the, that's the troubling part of cases of parental alienation is the child rejects the parent, even though there's no reason, there's nothing the parent has done to justify that type of rejection. So here, let me give you one more example, which shows this progression from, prior, from no alienation to more severe. So this next uh, image is uh, a little card drawn by a seven-year-old girl. This is a different girl. And she says to daddy, and then we blocked off her name from so-and-so. And it says, I love you. So that's a very sweet little, uh, maybe it was a Valentine's card or I'm not sure exactly what it was. But then a little while later, she's seven at that point, and a, a little while later, she's nine. You can see that she's starting uh, to have problems. And we know from uh, the history that she's, she's at an early stage of parental alienation at this point. And she draws this picture and she says on it, I knew something horrible would be in my life. So she's starting to describe how things are not going so well for her, at least internally in her own mind, things are not going so well. Well, this, this becomes really sad. And, and the next picture, which is age 10, and this is a note. This is something that she wrote in a kind of a scrapbook that she writes this little story. And let's read this little story together. This story is called He and She and the Kids. She had the kids. She gave the kids to him. The kids didn't want to go. He gave the kids back. She had the kids. She gave the kids to he. The next day, he took the kids. He got shot by a tank. The kids live happily ever after with she, and that's the end of the story. Well, that, I mean, that's, this is a, I guess you could just, what else can you say? This is a horrible story in which the child has the idea, has the fantasy of her father being shot by a military device by a tank. And she, in, the, in the same little book, she draws a picture. She draws, on the next page, she draws a picture of a tank and also another little military vehicle that has soldiers in it and a man with a gun. And, and, and she's conveying, what is she thinking about? She's having thoughts, she's having fantasies of her dad's death in a very violent way. So this is a horrible situation for this child to be in, that she's come to have these ideas, but both of these are little girls who are having ideas of their fathers having some kind of violent death. This, this, you know, this is impossible to characterize this as normal, especially when it's not based on anything. 
It's not based on the bad things that dad has done. Look, we need to move on. And I want to show you some happy artwork. I did. Some of this is very depressing. I want to show you a couple pictures that actually seem happy. So here's a little picture of a girl who drew this picture of a cow. And she won a contest with this. It's kind of neat. It's a very colorful picture. And the next one is a picture of a boat by a little boy. In school, he was asked to draw a picture of his idea of happiness. And he drew this. And finally, there's a picture by a little girl who drew a picture of her family with she's in the middle and there's her mom and her dad. So look, let me just mention the Parental Alienation Study Group. If you're interested in this topic, you can, uh, you can get in touch through, through this email address, through this website address, or if you wanna send me any of pictures, you can send them to me at this website, www.pasginfo. Thank you very much for being with us today and God bless. Our thanks to Dr. Burnett for his contribution to our program this week. Don't forget our in-person conference coming to Durham, North Carolina this September. We'll have a greeting from one of the speakers participating in this important event coming up next. At Victor's Crown, our focus is on you, our clients. When you arrive, our goal is that you will feel at home from our welcoming atmosphere to our serene surroundings. Everything we do at Victor's Crown is done with our clients in mind. We have comfortable seating areas for both adults and children. A large screen TV with surround sound where clients can be occupied with wholesome entertainment while they wait. We offer complimentary refreshments such as coffee, tea, water, and snacks. Due to the present COVID pandemic, our in-person appointments are restricted to selected cases, and those are held in our luxurious outdoor open air meeting space that we affectionately refer to as the COVID cabana, which was built specifically for our clients to offer them the most comfortable and relaxing outdoor space available. All our other clients are offered secured web-based telemed sessions where they can connect with us from anywhere in the world. In families dealing with alienation, communication during conflict is often very difficult. This fall, Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, will present a special in-person conference to address that very issue. Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills will be held September 9th through the 11th at the Marriott Research Triangle Park in Durham, North Carolina. You'll learn from experts how to master skills that can reduce anxiety, anger, and stress in alienation situations. Join event director Elaine Cobb, the founder and president of Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights, and conference moderator Dr. Colleen Murray as they present a lineup of highly respected experts, including keynote speaker Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, plus presentations by Bill Eddy, Megan Hunter, Dr. Joshua Coleman, Dr. Mark Mosk, Dr. Mary Alvarez, Dr. Sue Cornbluth, Shazia Sparkman, and Lisa Rothfuss. Mark your calendar now, September 9th through the 11th, for Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills, hosted by Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, Steel Partners Foundation, and PAISCA, Parental Alienation is Child Abuse. Visit familyaccess.info for more details on the conference and secure your attendance. Seating is limited. Hi, I'm Bill Eddy, and I'm going to be one of the speakers at the conference in September. I'm going to be speaking on overcoming the contagious emotions of alienation. And people don't realize how significant emotions are in alienating children. And what I'll be talking about is the dynamics of how 
Emotions are contagious, a little bit about the brain, a little bit about personalities who tend to have excessive emotions that overwhelm children so that they either try to satisfy the person by just giving up themselves and thinking like the other person, or really want to escape that person. So we'll talk about how emotions are contagious, personalities that tend to lack emotional boundaries. That's what the problem is. And then I'll talk about skills that we can teach parents especially, but that everyone can learn to help children not be overwhelmed by emotions and to be able to have managed emotions, flexible thinking, moderate behavior, which really reduces alienation. So I'll be talking about this during my session, and I'll include a little bit about our New Ways for Families method that we've been teaching to parents actually around the world, and some court systems have ordered this method of teaching the essentially high-conflict parent to manage their emotions better and have more flexible thinking. But we teach the same skills to a reasonable parent to anyone really who wants to learn. We have a counseling method, we have an online course method and coaching with that. So I'll be talking about all of that. I'll save the rest for when I see you at the conference in September. Best wishes. Remember, you can find out more about the upcoming conference, using and refining interpersonal skills by visiting the website, familyaccess.info. That's familyaccess.info. Seating for this event in Durham is limited, so please make your reservation soon. It's from Family Access, fighting for children's rights. We also would like you to give us some ideas on what you would like to have on our Families Divided TV program for subject matter. Please send your request to request for Families Divided TV at gmail.com. Thanks much. Next week on Families Divided. Dr. Coley Murray talks with Pastor Benjamin Agbanati and Rabbi Stephen Axelman about how parental alienation is affecting churches and vice versa. If you'd like to request prayer for your family, please send an email to prayersforfamilies at gmail.com.